to the Big Red Barrel Cast, episode 129. Woo-woo! We are recording on the 4th of July, so happy 4th of July, America. Um, that's why Dave's not on the show today. Canada Day just went down on July 1st, so happy Canada Day, belated Canada Day. Lots of fireworks still going off here. I'm sure there's a ton of fireworks going off in the States. My cat cannot handle fireworks. She has enough trouble with the lightning and the thunder. Fireworks. I'm just I'm just glad she didn't poo and pee all over the place. Because she did last year when she was a kitten. Anyway, so we're, we're back. Hasn't been super long since the last show. And we might even record another show at the end of this week. So things are starting to look up. Things are starting to look up. I'm joined this week by Kev from Across the Pond. I'm not Dave this time. He's not Dave this time. And filling in for Dave once again is our good friend Coleman from the BRB UK podcast. Hi. Fireworks also make me pee and poop. (laughs) And FYI, if the prices on your fireworks seem too good to be true, they are too good to be true. You never wanted those fingers anyway. Yeah, and there's rarely, if ever, a good reason to fire off fireworks that you're holding in your hand. There's never a good reason to do that. I mean, if it looks really, really cool, then maybe. Well, I mean, you got sparklers, right? They they go in your hand. That's uh, I must have been confused because I, I would never let off a rocket from my hand or anus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do what Jackass does. Yeah, I mean, if if there if there's no reason to hold them in your hand, there's definitely no reason to hold fireworks in your anus. That's why I said I wouldn't. Um, um, unless unless the firework is tied tied around a gerbil's leg, then there's a reason. That's a Richard Gere reference from back in the day, if you're old enough. <laughs> <laughs> he still hasn't lived it down, the poor man. And it's, and, it's, and it's completely made up too, right? Guy was in Pretty Woman. One person makes up a lie about a gerbil up his ass and he never lives it down. <laughs> anyway, so you know, so happy Canada Day. Happy 4th of July, uh, America. We got a bunch of stuff to talk about, but we're getting back into the old school BRB cast format. So we're going to talk about some new releases and we're going to talk about the latest news. So first up is... You know, the games that have come out in the last week or two. So first up is Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy dropped and it got solid reviews. I'm not really surprising. They did a reasonably good job of putting the package together and they were already great games. So were they already great games? I got to say Crash Bandicoot was never really my jam, but they're popular. um, Yeah, I can't deny that. Uh, I mean, everything Naughty Dog is popular. (laughs) Everyone that seems to go, oh, Crash Bandicoot is essentially my childhood. Like, I played Crash Bandicoot, but I was uh, 12, I think, 11 or 12. And the people I know who are basically like, the Crash Bandicoot was my childhood are a little bit younger than me, because Sonic the Hedgehog was my childhood. Crash Bandicoot was something I played a little bit later, but didn't really, you know, I played one and two. I remember playing Crash Bandicoot and asking what else was on the demo disc. <laughs> and then my stepbrother said, no, so it's totally a game. my childhood was dune 2 and and the art of war because i'm old (laughs) man you want to go that far back my childhood was a lot of turner nog and oh man oh man yeah (laughs) or police quest or oh uh, mummy on the amstrad police quest yeah yes now you're talking god we're getting old now we're like (laughs) we're talking we're talking like old old (laughs) no right it's disgusting. You want to hear old? My first console was something called a Grandstand 76, which was a Pong machine. Yep. Oh, man. Fair enough. I, I'm old enough to remember the very first uh, Olympics game. Oh, yes. Just just Olympics. Yeah, it was it, 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 it was just called the Olympics. And it was for, <laughs> uh, I think it was for the, the old Mac in the 80s. Yeah. Anyway, that's super old. Of course, there's a couple of our older listeners who are like, shut up, youngins. <laughs> we used to play games on an abacus. <laughs> He's like, I used, to, I used to play games in a nuclear bunker <laughs> and just just looking at the radar bleeps going back and forth. I remember playing games on an oscilloscope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oscilloscope. That's what I was thinking of. I had yeah, a ball yeah. and a cup and a stick and a hoop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy dropped. Valkyria Revolution dropped and... and I was kind of looking forward to it because the Valkyria games are pretty great, but it got disappointing reviews. I, I mean, and not just from the critics, the the a lot of the fan pages and stuff like that aren't so happy about it either. And they're basically just saying the strategy is super simplistic. There's a lot of repetition. There's quite a bit of filler content that doesn't really seem to serve a purpose. And even though I haven't played it, a lot of people are complaining that the cutscenes are sort of 
poorly organized and poorly spaced out and it doesn't seem like the game it should have been if you're if you're a fan of valkyria games that is disappointing those games are usually reliably great yeah so that's a little disappointing but the next one up on the list is isn't a game it's an addition to a game that came out two years ago three years ago uh let's try five years ago Man, it's been five years. Fuck. <laughs> it was 20... Actually, more, more than that, it was 2011, I think, when uh, Diablo 3 first came out in its initial state. Wow. So Diablo 3 Rise of the Necromancer expansion dropped. We call it an expansion? Addition? I mean, they call it an expansion. I wouldn't argue so much. It's a new class. I haven't picked it up because I've long since um, uninstalled Diablo 3, despite it being great. But I mean, I bought it on the PC. I bought it on the PS4. But I know Kev... I know you've got to have been playing Rise of the Necromancer. I've played it on both the PC and the PS4 at this point. <laughs> so, so I'm playing both. I'm, I mean, the word on the street is is that it's pretty. He's pretty great. So, is the Necromancer class awesome? It is broke as f- right now. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> of course. As with everything Blizzard does, they add a new thing to a game, and it is OP. But that's fine because it's a good laugh. Is it fun? Like, are his powers and moves cool? Real fun. So he's got a passive ability where anytime he kills something, it leaves a corpse on the ground, and then you use those corpses as fuel for your other spells. Nice. So there's a, there's a spell called Corpse Lance, where you literally rip all of the bones out of the corpses around you and fire them all as bo- as bone splinters. Nice. That dude's ahead of you. It all looks really cool. You get a little pet with this thing uh, called a... Uh, it's not the Flesh Golem, although you do get an ability called the Flesh Golem. But both Flesh Golem and the little pet thing are like skinless husks with pulsating backs that look like they're about to explode at any given time and occasionally do pop out a bit of blood from random little pores on the skin. It's, it's all real disgusting in the best way. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And is, is I, man, I should know this, but is it a paid edition or is it free? It is paid. It's 15 bucks, which I was more than happy to throw twice that money over at them given how many free content patches they've given over the past five yeah, years. Yeah, they, they put so much stuff out. Them and Rockstar with the GTA Online stuff, they're just constantly supporting. Yeah, totally. And this actually came out alongside a free patch for everyone, which introduced a whole new game mode to the game called Challenge Rifts. Yeah. Where everyone basically, if every week there's a new Challenge Rift that gets uploaded and everyone plays the exact same character, the exact same build, the exact same items. And it's just a leaderboard rush to see who can optimize that run the absolute best. And you get weekly loot for it as well if you get past the original runner's time. There's a hell of a lot going on in Diablo 3, which is insane given it's been six years. That's awesome. That's why I'm more than happy to lob money at them right now, even though I think it's probably asking a little more than it's worth for this Necromancer pack. It's just the amount of stuff they've given me over the... I've put easy, between the two versions of the game, like easily about one and a half thousand hours into Diablo 3. Damn, that's a lot. I like to return to old games now and then, but I'm so scattershot. Like, I'm usually playing two or three different things on any number of systems at the same time. And I'm just, I don't get suck, stuck into a single game that much. But I mean, I've ret- I've left and returned to Diablo 3 like a dozen times now. And I probably I probably will pick up Rise of the Necromancer at some point. Maybe, maybe before the summer ends. Because yeah. um, I'm on this quest to just go through my back catalog. I'm really trying to axe out all the ga- all the great games that I own that never played and you know, go through my Steam library and PSN games that I got for free and Xbox games with gold games that I got for free and all that stuff. Next up on the list is Marvel Heroes Omega, <laughs> which is the which is the, the, the console version of uh, the Marvel Heroes game that's been out on PC for a number of years. Some would say the definitive uh, version of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah they would. Yeah. yeah, some would say that and then be immediately committed. <laughs> Some would also pass out drunk in a pile of their own vomit, but hey. Console version is a very nice way of putting this. I would say absolute b- version. Of <laughs> yeah, Heroes. I mean, it's 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 not an exact port of the PC version. It's trimmed down. It's reorganized in, in, in a number of ways. And if you're like Kevin and I, who've been playing the PC version for a couple years now, none of your progression or collection from the PC version carries over to the console version, which is unfortunate. I, I mean, mm. for me, I've got so many hours and so many characters invested in the PC version, the console version doesn't really matter to me. They seem to have finally tweaked the controller setup so it, that, so it's a lot more comfortable to play with a controller. So if you've never played it on PC um, and you play it on the consoles, there's tons and tons of characters. 
it's on the not, PC. Well, on the, on the PC, the, the, the console, the console version is uh, a work in progress right now. It's getting there. There's like a since they've actually come out of beta and and gone into full release. There's a very large reliance on loot boxes that didn't used to be there, which is quite annoying because I'm not one for microtransactions, but again, it's a free-to-play game, so it doesn't really yeah. matter that much. Have they added the rest of the character roster yet? They've not added the rest of the character roster yet, Kev. For Christ's all sake. The, all the costumes. You don't have the ability <laughs> to have a partner in the game. You don't have the ability to have a pet in the game. That's the thing that really annoys me, because I don't get is my cool spider Is it still 200 team. quid for that flipping skin? No, now you get now you get them in loot boxes instead. Oh, good. They've they've gone proper Overwatch. Yeah, the con the console version doesn't seem like it should be out of beta. No, it doesn't. It it doesn't. It doesn't feel finished. But I mean, the PC version, Kevin, I've been playing for years. I mean, I've got. I think I'm missing twelve characters right now. <laughs> okay. Um. So I mean, I've I've put some serious time into it, and and it's not really fair to call Marvel Heroes like a Diablo or whatever. It's it's. It's its own thing. It's definitely not the min-max game that I think some people wanted it to be. And and the PC no. version recently went through a major overhaul that alienated a lot of the old players, but made it much more accessible to, to new players and got rid of... Kevin and I have talked about this on the show before. Uh, a lot of the changes that were made recently to the PC version needed to happen because there was a lot of mindless, useless stuff um, that they they chucked out the window. But if you like the Marvel properties and you like being able to play, especially some of the lesser known heroes, like you can play, play Squirrel Girl and, and you know, Squirrel Girl Surfer is and, so OP. <laughs> oh, she's, she's, she's great. I mean, she's I, I really, I really enjoy Marvel heroes. Um, even though it was, the game has always been a mess. Like they weren't really sure what they were building when they started, and it's gone through major, 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 major changes. I would hold off getting the console version for at least a couple more months, at least until they add all the content that the PC players already have access to. I I'd actually argue against that, mainly because again, since it's come out of beta, it it is still bad, but it's not as bad as it was. And plus, if you haven't got that foresight of the the pc version if you've never played the pc version and you 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 know you have a ps4 or an xbox and that's it then you might actually enjoy this and especially if you get a team speak going you get some friends on there i've been playing the ps4 version a lot with tim and get him into uh, uh punisher as his main and we've been having a right laugh of it yeah i was just about to say that i think mine and pat man's opinions on this console version and Coleman's to an extent because he did play the pc for a bit yeah like it is entirely dependent on us having played two plus years of the really good version. If we had never done that, this would probably still, like, as a Marvel fanboy, I would be really into this. Yeah, I mean, if you're a Marvel fan, there's definitely something there for you. Uh, and, and especially if you don't have a, a game, uh, like a, a PC that you can game on, this is obviously the version you're going to get. If and when it gets everything the PC has, there's there, there, there's some fun to be had there. And, and knowing how they've developed it so far, it'll probably go through a lot of changes. One big complaint I do have about it is that Marvel Heroes 2016, is it, on the PC? Yeah. Before the announcement of it coming to consoles, they actually did a significant update and added in this um, this really cool uh, controller support for it. And they're like, this is it, the definitive controller support. This is the best controller support. And then it comes out onto consoles, like, it's not even the same controller support. What the hell? No, it's not. It's really weird. <laughs> to be fair, once I got, I, I do prefer playing it with the controller i do um especially especially now that a lot of the things have been overhauled but that said there are a couple characters on pc anywhere where i do play i i do switch and go and play with the mouse and keyboard like specifically dr strange and um, a couple of the other heroes that have much more complex power systems they're a little bit easier to use now that the overhaul has gone down but still anyway so if you can, I think the PC version is the best, but if you only have console, there's something there for you, but it's not pretty in its current state. Plus, we're going to be doing some uh, BRB Gamer Nights on the PS4 version, I know especially, so if you want to play it, then there's going to be people to play it with. And the last new release that we're going to talk about is Zelda Breath of the Wild. The Master's Trials finally dropped, so that's part one of the two-part DLC from the uh, the expansion pass that you could buy for Breath of the Wild that came out. So the second part is a single player story DLC, which is a, another new chapter to the game that's going to come out uh, this holiday season. But the first half is the Master Trials, and it's gotten okay reviews. I mean, a lot of people just bought the expansion pass so that they could get access to the story content later in the year. And the hard mode. Don't forget the hard mode. Well, well yeah, it adds some good stuff. So it adds um, the hard difficulty mode, 
new costumes, gives you the travel medallion that allows you to create temporary quick travel points wherever you are so you don't have to travel to use uh, uh, the quick travel to go back and forth to certain places, which is just that's just a convenience thing. That's a nice addition. And you get a system to track where you've actually gone before on the map. But the main big chunk of it is uh, the Trial of the Sword, which is a 45 room challenge dungeon. I guess it's, you can call it a dungeon, but it's a it's a whole bunch of challenges all in a row. And in the end, you get a maxed out, fully powered up sword, which is kind of cool. It's 20 bucks for the expansion and you and you can't buy the pieces of the expansion separately. You have to, you have to pay the full twenty dollars to get the master trials and the story of DLC that comes later in the year. It's pretty cool. I like it. More because the travel medallion is nice. I like the hard mode. Some of the new costumes and, and uh, accessories are really, really fun to mess around with. You know, and it's only 20 bucks, so it's not like we're paying the, the $70 season pass that other games are charging us for. I'm curious to see how good that story of DLC ends up being. I haven't actually tackled the, 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 uh, the trials in the DLC yet, though. I haven't got the games, <laughs> so I can't really... Can't really comment on the DLC. I've, I've only pl- I played about two hours of the game on someone else's Switch, and that's about it. I was going to dive into it more, but I recently got back into playing Battlefield 1 because I never got around to playing some of the, the, the new DLC maps from uh, the recent expansion that dropped, and they've been holding a whole bunch of events this summer, and I probably dropped another 150 hours into Battlefield 1 before I burnt out again. It was like, and this game is <laughs> awesome! Basically, I was chasing after dog t- the superfluous dog tags that they were releasing because they allowed people to, if you missed earning some of the, the Zodiac dog tags earlier in the year, they ran a, a one-week event this past week where every day you could earn a new dog tag if you, you know, hit certain objectives. And I really enjoy, you know, the sort of challenges that, that, that are attached to the dog tags and medals in Battlefield 1 because it makes me change up how you play, right? You know, sometimes you're chasing vehicles, sometimes you're chasing horseback medals, or you're, you're trying to do aircraft stuff. I mean, it's I really, really love Battlefield 1. It's so great. That game somehow never grabbed me. Yeah, same. I played it and I liked what I played. It just, I, I don't know. It never grabbed me in the same way that it seems to have grabbed. Everyone I know loves Battlefield 1 to bits. And I just, I don't know. It just didn't get me. You know what did get me was Titanfall 2. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Titanfall 2 No one else great. really got got by that. <laughs> no, that's not true. We all got got by Titanfall 2, but the online community got so much better than us so quickly. <laughs> it just wasn't that fun true, to play. Yeah. They're so that good. But I mean, even just the single player Titanfall 2 was so great. It was really, really well done. And with Battlefield 1, um, I've, I've actually got, finally got around to setting up the Big Red Barrel Platoon. So uh, you can search for that uh, and, and join the Big Red Barrel Platoon. And you can, you can join, I think, up to nine different platoons. So if, you, if you're looking for someone to play with, I'm, I'm usually playing it quite often. So you can join our platoon and then you can always hop in and play with anyone else in the platoon. But if you, have, you and your buddies have your own platoon or you want to join platoons for other podcasts or other websites, you can do that too. And then you can just hop swap between which platoon you're representing whenever you want just from from inside inside the game and we've got an official big red barrel logo so it'll appear on your uniform and your vehicles it's pretty dope you know what i think my problem is is i'm just i'm still lamenting the fact that they haven't made a battlefield bad company three yet (laughs) yeah (laughs) just my silent protest going on i thought you were just waiting for official big red barrel barrel logos for you to have on your uniform and then that will be what gets you into battlefield one finally that would be pretty good there you go man i should have looked up who actually made the logo (laughs) but it's 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 really sharp you know it's it's a, it's a big red barrel and it but it the way it's set up is it it looks really good on the uniforms you know it look it looks like the kind of thing you'd see as a badge on a uniform and it looks really good on the vehicles where some people logos are just this sort of mess that they made in the emblem maker and it just it looks weird on your uniforms and your vehicles but this ours actually looks pretty sharp i'm actually pretty happy with it now let's get into some of the news and the first thing is we're going to talk about Beyond Good and Evil, the HD version. So that's the that's the first game, the HD remaster that came out a number of years ago. I recently went to purchase it and realized that I already had it for free. <laughs> nice. Classic. So if you've been a PlayStation Plus subscriber for uh, a long time, chances are if you go and you look into your digital catalog, you probably already own a copy of Beyond Good and Evil HD because it was given out to PlayStation Plus uh, subscribers back in November 2015 in North America and Europe and 2016 if you're in the Asian territories. So if you've been if you've been a PlayStation Plus subscriber for a long time, 
time, you probably already own Beyond Good and Evil HD, and it's just waiting there for you to play it. And I know a lot of people, you know, they just go through every month and they just add the place, the free PlayStation Plus games to their library, and then they they promptly forget about them. Yeah. And a lot of people might not have been interested in playing Beyond Good and Evil HD because it wasn't really in on their radar until Beyond Good and Evil Two uh, had their recent E3 demo. But it's you know if you're if you're a subscriber you probably already own it and it's great it's a great game it's really good yeah there's also I believe it was games of gold like a month or two ago as well so it is available on 360 as well I bought it when the HD remake first came out on the 360 and now it's backwards compatible on Xbox One as well so yeah I do need to replay through that at some point oh and FYI the P the the Beyond Good and Evil um, that you can buy off the Steam marketplace is not the HD version. Oh. It's it, it's the it's the 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 Beyond Good and Evil on Steam is the old version. It's not the HD remaster. But you can up the resolution. You can there's a there's a mod pack for it um too uh, for the piece for the PC version as well. But if you want the official HD remaster, you can only get it on on PlayStation or Xbox. Let's be clear though, the Steam version I'm just looking at it now is £1.74 at the moment. <laughs> it's a good price. But it's a lot of people bucks. are buying the Steam version thinking they're getting the HD version and they're not. Um so you can only get it on PlayStation or, or, or Xbox. But like we said, you probably if you've been a PlayStation Plus subscriber or an Xbox Games of Gold subscriber for a while, you probably already own a copy. Yeah. Which is nice. You just you just might have to go digging through your your back catalog of digital purchases to find it. Speaking of games with gold and PlayStation Plus, the free games with gold games for July 2017 for the Xbox One, you're gonna get Grow Up and Runbo, which are both meh. For the 360, you're gonna get Canon Lynch 2, which is actually a lot better than people think it is. It's, no, it's, it's not. Actually, it's actually, <laughs> no, it's not. You're talking at your bottom. <laughs> I, I, I actually really, really like the story for Kane and Lynch 2. I think it a was, lot of people It was do. good. I've played both Kane and Lynch games, and they're just so poorly made. I don't understand how they released. The big problem with 2 is there's three core levels in it that were just... They're so broken... They're so broken, but there's there's some real there's a really cool story in two. It's so violent, it's so dark and so violent. But there's also two mission, two of these big uh, uh, set piece battles that happen towards the end of Kane and Lynch two, which are just like manic. They're so crazy. I mean, don't get me wrong, Kane and Lynch one and two are both super flawed, super 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 flawed. But it's free. You can't. Uh, it's it's free, and if you got nothing else to play, it's. I I don't know. I enjoyed Kane and Lynch one and two for what they were, but paying full price or even paying anything really for them was asking too much because they were so broken. But <laughs> <laughs> give me money, Square. <laughs> I mean, two didn't get its final patch that actually made the the whole game playable till almost a year after it came out. I think so. Ooh. It was rough. I find myself wondering whether IO, now that they've split from squaring, they, they've, I mean, they've made it known they're keeping the Hitman IP, which is great, but I wonder if they got to keep Kane and Lynch as well. Of course not. No one wants it. They're like, no, we don't, <laughs> we're not taking it. Keep it. Well, that's it. Maybe, maybe Square pushed out the door with them. They're like, you want to go f off with this as well then? I think Square tried to make IO make a new Kane and Lynch 3, and they, that's, that's why they left. That's, that's what happened. That's what actually happened. <laughs> that's what happened. Confirmed like, it. Well, I can't make it work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so you get Grow Up and Runbo for Xbox One, Kane and Lynch Two for Xbox 360, and Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, the video game for 360, um, which is which is among the weakest of the Lego video games. I know a few people that really liked that. They, they, it's it's the kind of same level as uh, the Lord of the Rings Lego game that came out around about the same time. Oh yeah, I mean, there's there one of the Lord of the Rings Lego games is really fantastic. A couple of the Marvel ones and DC ones are are pretty fantastic, and the, a couple of the Star Wars ones. But there's a lot of Lego video games, and they're not all of the the same quality. PlayStation Plus for July 2017 on the PS4, you're getting Until Dawn, which yes. a lot of people like. And you're also getting the full Telltale's Game of Thrones series for the PS4 as well, which is, again, 
a lot of people really like that. I hope that works properly now, because a lot of people were annoyed when it first came out that it was kind of broken. Well, I mean, all the Telltale games launch in some sort of broken state. Well, no, there's an acceptable level of Telltale jank that comes with the Telltale engine, but apparently Game of Thrones was over that level of jank. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was on, what, Jurassic Park levels? Probably, yeah, Jurassic Park or uh, Back to the Future. Back to the probably. Future. Yeah. <laughs> And on PlayStation Three, you're gonna you're gonna get Tokyo Jungle, which Love is it. that game where you, where you make your pets fight each other, be a Pomeranian, take over the world, and have sex. Yeah, <laughs> the true best game where you get to breed your own new characters. So good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, you just want to play an angry Pomeranian. Tokyo Jungle is amazing. It's such a, it's it's such a, it's such a, a, a ridiculous game. It's definitely worth playing. I mean, it's I mean, just like Kane Lynch too. It's free. You know, you're not being, you're, you're already, you're already a subscriber. It's free. It's worth playing just for the, just for the laughs. And you're, you're also going to get, uh, Darkstalkers Resurrection. I'm surprised Tokyo Jungle never came to Vita or PS4 as like a quick port because it doesn't look like the most taxing of games that could have easily been thrown out. I wish it did because I want to play that. I don't want to have to get my PS3 out again because I don't even know where it is, if I'm honest. Because I, <laughs> I, I, I genuinely thought when I bought my PS Vita, I thought Tokyo Jungle was on the Vita because the first time I saw it was at a preview and they had them running on Vitas. But they were just showing off the cross... They were well, just showing the, yeah. uh, the... Not the cross play, the um, remote play aspect. Yeah. Yeah. That's a shame. It's just... Yeah, that, that game should be on the Vita. It Man, I, I've I've still got my. I mean, I just recently had all my PlayStation stuff fixed up, like my 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 PSP Go and Vita and my PS3 all all uh, officially uh, repaired by by Sony. So I still use my PS3 and do all sorts of stuff with it. But it is weird that Tokyo Jungle I didn't make it on. But speaking of the Vita, the Vita games for this month from PlayStation Plus are Element. Is it ele- is it supposed to be elemental, but it's just spelt with a four L? It's elemental, but they've gone fan four stick with the title. Fan four stick. I mean it's written <laughs> elemental four L, but it's it's supposed to be elemental. Elemental four. And uh, so, so, yeah, so you're gonna get element and you're gonna get Don't Die Mr. Robot, which is uh, a cross by on PlayStation 4. So if you get it for PlayStation Vita or PlayStation 4, you can play it on either one. And this month you're also getting a, a free playlink game. Uh, called That's You, which is available to everyone with PlayStation Plus from July 4th to October 24th. And PlayLink is Sony's new thing where it's a, it's basically a party game setup where you can use your phone or your tablet to interact with your family or friends and stuff to play different linked games on PlayLink. And it looks like they're going to be giving away free PlayLink games to PlayStation Plus subscribers for the next f- couple months. They might even make it an official, uh, official part of the PlayStation Plus going forward. They just haven't confirmed that yet. Interesting thing I found out about my... Uh vita games collection recently because i had ignored the playstation plus offerings on the vita for ever <laughs> pretty much i had my games on the vita that i played like spelunky Yay. and a couple of other things and that was about it uh and i looked at how many games i had on there from ps plus and uh, it turns out that if you've had ps plus from day one like i have you own probably about half to two thirds of the vita catalog <laughs> At this point. Playing Jack and Dax to the collection on mine. Yeah. What else we got? So, as we're, we're recording this on the 4th of July, so uh, as we speak right now, the Steam, the Steam summer sale is still going on, the PlayStation summer sale is still going on, Xbox summer sale is still going on, um, good old games, and uh, Gamersgate. And a, Gamersgate? I mean, uh, okay. uh, was it was it Gamegate? What the hell is that one called that's similar to Gamersgate? G2A? They're similar to Gamergate. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the uh, the one with the anti-feminist agenda. Which which one was that? <laughs> yeah, G two. Oh no, they're not anti-feminist because uh, uh, nearly fifty percent of their workforce are women, so you shouldn't be mean to them. Yeah, I remember the spokesman saying so. As long as the spokesman said so. No, no, it it actually is gamersgate.com. Oh my, oh my god. god, that's the worst name. <laughs> yeah, well, they had, they had they had the name before Gamersgate became oh, a thing. That's anyway, unfortunate. Anyway, there's a whole. They bunch need a rebrand. Of- yeah, uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, you know all the consoles except for except for Nintendo and most of the the PC digital storefronts are holding some sort of summer sale. I spent most of my money put my money down on buying a new uh, uh, my first bicycle in in about ten years this Friday, nice. and I'm getting a, a new Nintendo DS uh, 
new Nintendo 2DS XL on the 28th, a couple days after my birthday. So I'm saving up money to, to, to buy some 3DS games. So I haven't really dipped heavy into the summer sales this year like I usually do. Have you guys picked up anything during the summer sales? Yeah, I got a few things. No, not yet. I don't usually... I Sales are very dangerous because they everything looks like it's uh, very enticing. It's nice prices. You know, I've seen dmc devil may cry remake uh, uh ported over to the ps4 for like a fiver and the same with the god of war ports and i buy these games and then they sit in my library and i never play them so <laughs> I, i've stopped picking stuff up in sales i mean the other thing is i especially this last year i've been pretty good about my about saving my money to buy what i want so there isn't a lot at least that's come out in the last year that i don't already own so most most of the stuff that's being offered is is older stuff that I sort of missed out on, um, you know. And and then there's a, there's a few there's I mean there's some there's some great deals. Sony had had great sales earlier in the month in in May you know uh, May and in June they had quite a few really good strong sales. Their quote unquote uh, summer sale that they have going on right now isn't really that strong. The, the the three sales that they had before it were actually stronger. Um, the Xbox summer sale that's going on right now is pretty great. There's some there's some AAA games that are pretty steeply uh, cut in price. Like you can buy um, Halo Five Guardians for uh, twenty bucks. Which is which is a pretty is a pretty great deal, and a lot of their backwards compatible games are on sale for like five dollars, and that's pretty good too. Like you can get all the Fable games and uh, uh, you know Blue Dragon and Crackdown and Blue Dragon. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sold. Yeah, love Blue Dragon. Anyway, so yeah, I guess this year you know the bunch of us didn't really get heavily bit. I mean, I probably would spend more, but I got to save my money to get. 3ds games and 3ds games especially the, the the marquee 3ds games don't don't really get deep sales especially because i'm not buying physical releases i'm buying digitally so i'm basically looking at 40 to 50 dollars canadian for every game that i want to buy so i gotta save my cash if you look on uh the playstation store you can get the witcher free wild hunt game of the year edition which comes with the season pass for all the other dlc for 26 pound 24 that's a lot of hours of content there. That is a lot of hours of content for £26.24. I still haven't even started the two expansions for that game oh yet. Oh my god, it's so it's <laughs> it's just so, it's just such a huge world to get lost in. I actually got it um the the whole Witcher package off Good Old Games, which is the actual uh Good Old Games is actually owned by the same company that makes Project, the Witcher yeah. games. Um so I got I got it from them because there's a couple pieces of promotional content that you could only get if you got it right from, directly from good old games on pc um but that game's fantastic and and it's and it's still selling i mean it's it's still selling really well it's i mean even now it, it's a beautiful beautiful game i mean it's still an amazing game um, i got keep talking and nobody explodes oh because it's that like damn time that's good yeah that's fun it's about time i got it i also picked up near automata because Nice. No game released this year has been more up my alley that I haven't played yet. <laughs> it's so good. I haven't started it yet, but I am going to play the crap out of it. I mean, I know so many people that would love it, and for whatever reason, just haven't picked it up. Yeah. Um. I mean, the first, the first near. It was a flawed thing. It was. It was flawed, but near Automata. I mean, a we've talked about it before. It had probably one of the strongest demos. Yeah. In in recent years. I mean, just the demo alone was one of the best demos for a video game in probably the last five years. It was really and, and this is a time where demos don't have the same, you know, clout they used to. But it had a fantastic demo. And it's and it's a unique game. So it's like it's a, a you know, a third person action game, but it's also a platformer, side scrolling platformer. Twin it's stick also it's, it's also a you know a top down twin stick shooter. It's also a bullet hole game, <laughs> a bullet hell game. And it and it waves in between those styles of gameplay flawlessly. It's not like you play one level as bullet hell and one level. It as you as you travel around the map, it waves in and out of different genres and it all flows together really well. And then on top of that, it has a really, really, really great story. And then on top of that, if you finish the game once, you see, you know, things turn out a certain way. But the more times you beat the game, the more story elements and things you learn and discover about the game and it changes everything. And there's, you know, costumes and everything else. I mean, it's a really fantastic game and it's pro and, it, and there's nothing else on the market that's like it. I can't wait. 
I also picked up Bayonetta. Ray. Because I love that game. I own it on every other system I might as well have on PC. Well, I mean, uh, Bayonetta and Vanquish on PC are the definitive versions. Yeah. They're fantastic. They're I haven't fantastic. got around to grabbing Vanquish yet, but Bayonetta is a game. Oh, I God. If you've love. never played Vanquish and you have a good PC, pick it up. Um, otherwise, get it for the. I mean, if you can get. If you, can, if you have a PC that can play it, get Bayonetta and Vanquish for a PC. If you don't have a PC that can play them, you want to buy it for the Xbox because Vanquish and Bayonetta both run very poorly on the PlayStation. Yeah, I remember that. Wasteland 2, Director's Cut, based on Fuck Pac-Man's yeah. personal recommendation. Nice. I, I literally just I literally just finally finished a total 100% playthrough of, of Wasteland 2 Director's Cut a couple weeks ago. And it's, you know, it's a, a top-down... It's like the original Fallouts, even though, like, Wasteland is... It was it's a, an isometric RPG. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Wasteland was the inspiration for the Fallout games, and then the Fallout games went to first-person shooter, whereas when they finally made Wasteland 2, they went back to the old-school top-down style. And it's really great. And the director's cut adds tons of voice content, um, new perk system. I mean, it's really, really, really great. And it's long, too. It'll probably take you, you know... I mean, if you do everything, you know, 50, 60 hours? Yeah, yeah. I've played about half an hour of it so far, and there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, the, the the one thing about Wasteland 2 that I'll say is, it's unlike a lot of other games that really hold your hand, it's really easy to f*** up party creation. Because you can create your own four-person party for your four main characters from the beginning of the game. As you travel around, you can add three more companions to your party. So you can travel around with a max of seven. But if you f*** up how you design your, your core four, you're in for a world of hurt. So I got really intimidated by the character creation options and just ended up going for the default squad. Is that the way to go? If you're really lost, I mean, really what you need is you have to have a dedicated sniper. Yeah, that comes in the default squad. You get like a combat medic, a sniper, a knife guy, and someone else. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you'll get, you can get a dedicated medic very early on as a companion. So there's not really a lot of need to create your own medic. Although you can, you can start person with just a couple points just to just to be able to heal your party until you get your companion that can do healing. But you you need to, one of your main characters should be a sniper. One of your main characters should be your talker. So he's got charisma and he can do um, hard ass, smart ass. Yeah, I gave one guy like three points in smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, yeah, you, you want you want a person you you want someone who's going to be your leader, who's going to do your bartering, who's going to do your charisma based stuff, who's going to do your hard ass, smart ass, you know, conversation stuff. You're going to want someone who has a lot of action points, who will do um, your lock picking and your safe cracking, and then you want someone who can do all your skill based stuff, so your your mechanical repair, um, and you know technical stuff like that but i mean it's it's trial and error you know it's one of those old school games where you can really customize your characters to a really high degree and there's a lot of really great really really great guides for that game yeah anyway moving on from wasteland 2 next up on the list is the snes classic got announced it's coming out on sold out it's probably going to sell out really quickly but you can't you can't even um put a pre-order down for it yet at least at the time of we're recording but it comes out september 29th it's 80 dollars us hdmi out this time it comes with two controllers hopefully two controllers with a longer cord five feet i think it said on the thing controller cables are longer doesn't come with a power supply though um it doesn't come with a power supply it's uh, a standard ac power supply yeah, though so yeah. Well, I mean, it, it it does come with the power supply if you're in if you're in North America. It doesn't come with the AC adapter in in uh, the UK and Europe. Oh, really? That's yeah. a bit sucky. Yeah. But although we do get the better looking version of the of the we product, get the so. sexy one. Yeah, you got you the, the you know uh, UK, Europe, and and Asia get the uh, the Famicom uh, styled version, right? Yeah, coloured buttons. The one we originally had with colourful buttons and a nice looking. SNES. But apparently they f- they fixed the plastic to it, so it won't look like mine, because mine looked very yellow around the outside, because my parents both smoked. Yeah, yeah. So, so if, if you, but if you live in the UK or, or Europe, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, because I mean, right now you can, char- you, you can already charge it via uh, USB, 
But if you're in the, the UK or Europe, you're going to have to buy the AC adapter, which basically, you know, you plug your USB into one end of the adapter and plug that adapter into the wall. Rubbish. Um, and that's a, that's a couple extra bucks. Now, I think, and I'm not 100% on this, but this is what I've heard from another source, that America also gets a head up on the Street Fighter race. Because... On the Euro, on the US, uh, sorry, on the UK and, or rather EU and Japanese versions, we get, I think, Super Street Fighter 2? Or oh, maybe it's Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh, but America gets that. Super Turbo, which is, you know, the definitive Street Fighter 2 version. We, we, we and get, that we really get, annoys me. We get Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting. Yeah. I thought that's what we got. I think it's the same, isn't it? I think America gets Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I thought we got um, super. I thought we got Street Fighter Two Turbo, and they got Street Fighter Two Turbo Hyper Fighting, which I just oh, we thought it? was the name. Yeah, in we the get US. Hi- we get Hyper Fighting. Yeah, but I'm not 100 percent the difference between Hyper Fighting. I'll, I'll have not. to ask Tim because like he's the Street Fighter expert, and there are over a hundred iterations of Street Fighter Two now. So yeah, <laughs> all I know is that Super Street Fighter Two Turbo is the one that everyone wanted. I think if that even exists, maybe I'm just throwing words together. <laughs> I don't know anymore. The big thing is, at least at least in North America, so you're getting 21 games with the SNES Classic, um, and they're and unlike unlike the NES Classic, the SNES Classic that we're getting, all of the games are good. They're all oh, they're really, bangers. Really good. It's a list of absolute bangers. They, you know, you're, you're getting stuff like uh, you know F Zero, Final Fantasy Three, Earthbound, Secret of Mana, Mega Man X, uh, Zelda: a Link to the Past, Super Mario Kart. I mean, they're all really, really, really great. Um, the one big standout is uh, uh, you're fi- we're finally getting Star Fox 2, which was never officially ever released. Ah, but if you're in the UK, we're getting two exciting ones because there's also Super Mario RPG Legend of the Sel- Seven Sons, which never came out in the UK. Yeah. Although everyone yeah. in the UK played it on an emulator at some point. Yeah, yeah. I played it. Well, well, ju- ju- <laughs> I mean, just like Star Fox 2, you've been able to play that in emulation for a long time. Star Fox 2, the completed version's never been on emulate. Uh, on, uh, the official Nintendo completed yeah. version's never been oh, on that's, emulation. That's, that's true. I mean, this is this is the first time the actual finished product has ever been released to the public. I mean, yeah, you've, been able, like you've been able to play. You've been able to play a you know uh, an unfinished uh, emulated version for a long time. But, but yeah, there's there's two versions out there. One is the one's like a pre prototype which uh, contains multiplayer, well, a multiplayer option that doesn't actually work because they dropped that before the game was close to release. And then the other version is an unfinished version that was toured around uh, different shows, CS and stuff, and finished by modders, em- uh, guys uh, setting up for emulation. Yeah. So the version that's coming out with this is the actual finished version that was meant to be, which was finished and was meant to be released, but it was too late in the SNES's life cycle and too close to the N64 that they that Nintendo worried that it would take attention away from the 64. So it got cancelled. Yeah. So, that's, I mean, that's, that's a big deal. So all of this sounds good, except for the fact that, you know, we all remember how impossible it was to get the NES Classic. And there's every reason to believe that even if they do... Uh, produce more that this is going to sell the minute the pre-orders go live it's or or the, the sales go live that it's going to sell out like almost immediately of course well i i would hesitate to say although i'm going to say it this will be way more popular than the nes classic was especially in europe we didn't really have nes's over here but the snes was a must well, me, have I mean, it's gonna it's gonna sell like gangbusters. It's gonna sell, and, and they've said at least for right now that they're only producing it for this year. So if you don't get it while it's while it's on sale, that's that's gonna be it. You're gonna be left either buying it off of eBay for a higher price, or hoping you can get it, you know, from somebody who doesn't want it anymore years later. But and it's launching in like six weeks or something, isn't it? It's the end of August. They basically they announced this and then went, yeah, pre-orders are going up tomorrow. By the way, and that that annoyed me so much. Like I would love to get a hold of one of these. I would love to get a hold of like a Japanese and a, an American and a UK version and have them all lined up next to my my uh, mini Nintendo Classic. If I could have bought one, if they didn't get scalped and, and bloody sold off. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Um, so this yeah, is one of those things that will be great for passing down to your kids. Yeah. So September 29th. So that's that's not very far away. Oh, I hope I get one. <laughs> the next one, next one, next one on the list. This isn't going to be a surprise to anyone, given how poorly the game did uh, commercially and critically. But 
Mass Effect Andromeda will not be getting single player DLC. There will be no single player DLC, even though they had initially talked about it and teased single player DLC. That's no longer happening. The game just got hammered by the critics and just sold so poorly. There's no point in the DLC. Now, initially, there was this super widely shared uh, Facebook post from a group from a group claiming to be uh, claiming to be called Sinclair Networks that said that they had been working on the D- the single player DLC for Andromeda um, for Bioware, but that turned out to be a fake post. Um, you know, Bioware does some not. Would say. Yeah, it was it was it was fake news. So Bioware does not contract out DLC creation to third party studios. Sinclair uh, uh, Sinclair Networks is bogus. That post was bogus, and uh, because the Sinclair Networks said that they had been working on DLC for for Bioware for the game, and then it got canceled. That that post is fake. What is true is that single player DLC has actually been canceled. Oh. Um, there's, so there's not going to be any single player DLC for for Andromeda, which means all of the loose ends and unfinished story points from the end of Andromeda will probably never be addressed because not only have they canceled any of the single player DLC, all the plans for Andromeda's sequel have also been shelved. So there's no guarantee that if the, when they when they return to the Mass Effect franchise that they'll even pick up Andromeda. They might just leave Andromeda where it is and start fresh with a new setting and a new setup. That would be terrible cuz like I know I know Mass Effect Andromeda wasn't received particularly well in reviews and and because of all the the glitches and stuff, but there are folks, you know, there are fans of Andromeda that are waiting for the the single player DLC. Is the game was was uh, you know, undeniably flawed. And it it's isn't just mess. about the it wasn't yeah, it was just a hot mess. I mean, there's a great long article on and I know we all have our issues with Kotaku, but there's a really great piece on Kotaku where they talk to the you know, talk to the development team and they and they outline that whole five year development process. And in the end, Andromeda basically came together in a year and a half the game that we actually got. It went through development hell, it never really had a chance to shine. I, there's parts of it that I really, 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 really loved, even though there was a lot of flaws and I would never recommend paying full price for it. But it, I thought that the single player DLC was going to be their chance to sort of redeem and make up for the problems with the core game. There was a lot of room to grow and, and add new story elements and new content to the game versus DLC. And now that we're not getting it, Andromeda is permanently stuck in a place where it's an unfinished, broken game. And that's, 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 that sucks. And if they, and since the sequel has been shelved, we've got to hope that years from now, we might get something that finally answers those unanswered questions, but there's no guarantee that'll happen. They might return to Mass Effect with a new setting and new characters and just pretend that Andromeda never happened. I'm just going to keep pretending it never happened because I never got around to playing it. I'm going to keep playing the multiplayer and probably not start the single player. <laughs> well, I mean, it, sh- it should tell people that how, how poorly it's, do- it's doing because other AAA games that came out long before Andromeda came out are still selling for 40 or 50 or $60. Whereas you can, right now, as we speak, Andromeda is selling for twenty dollars on a dozen different storefronts for twenty bucks. But you can play multiplayer, and you can get a Krogan, and you can give him a pink spacesuit, and then he becomes the best. Yeah, but the mo- it, well, that's another thing. They're gonna, still going to support multiplayer with new content, but multiplayer in Andromeda isn't as good as multiplayer in Mass Effect Three, specifically for one main reason: Three had way better enemies to fight against that were way more interesting to fight. The enemies that you fight in in Andromeda are nowhere near as interesting. There's no crazy banshees or anything else. It's all kind of the same. And the way they've done the loot drops and the leveling up your different classes is not fun. It's not fun. Like, And you can still play Mass Effect 3's multiplayer, and lots of people are playing it right now. I was playing it just the other day. <laughs> like, okay. Go play Mass Effect 3's multiplayer, then play Andromeda's multiplayer. Okay, I shall do that. Yeah. What else do we got here on the list? Spider-Man, the homecoming VR experience drop for free. I have played it. Um, what did you think? <laughs> it's really short. It's incredibly <laughs> short. So as uh, Peter Parker, you put on the Spider-Man suit. This, uh, I'll say, this is all VR and move experience as well. So you have to open a case, put on a suit, and then you have to play with three different types of webbing one which is the traditional thrip out and pull something in towards you. Uh, 
the scatter shot, which is like little web bullets, and then like a grenade as well. Um, and then once you've done the training, it goes, oh no, watch out, here comes the vulture! And then you chase after the vulture, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna blow up a crane. And then you web the crane back together, and it's like, right, go chase the vulture! And then you swing towards him, and then the credits play. It lasted about three minutes. <laughs> yeah, so so it's it's not a game, it's... It's it's an advert. It's it's Yeah, it's, it's just promotional material to get you hyped for the movie and they've said that this isn't an indication that there's going to be some sort of spider-man vr game there is no spider-man vr game in the works it feels like there is because the game has all these mechanics that don't get used and it feels like it belongs to either a project that they intended to be bigger and then cut short or something that might come in later or something that might get updated now, I don't know if they've commented if this is going to be updated post the launch of the movie to avoid spoilers and stuff. The word is right now that there is no plans for a full development project for it. I mean, you're right, though. But I mean, just like the Batman game, people were hoping that there was going to be a, you know, uh, a larger version of the Batman VR game that we already oh, got. Oh, no. The, si- the size of the Batman VR game is plenty. I think that is a perfect size for a, for a small VR experience. But the the Batman VR game that was supposed to be just the start of a much larger project okay. that never actually ended ended up happening. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I've I've given my opinion on VR. I still I still think it's very much in the tech demo gimmick phase. Well, that's fair enough. But if you do have a PSVR or you do have a, a, a PlayStation, uh, not PlayStation, a HTC Vive oh, yeah. oh, or it, something, it's free. It's then, free. Well, it, it's yeah, it's free. Give it a try, but don't look at it's it's not going to do anything for you it's more of a taster to see whether you want to drop 15 pounds on playing batman arkham vr because it's the same yeah. mechanics <laughs> and yeah. the batman yeah. one is the much superior and you have more time with game yeah yeah i mean i like don't get me wrong i really love the vr the vr mode for pre-existing AAA titles like playing vr um, elite. With, with, with project cars or elite or whatever like playing it playing vr with a sim game in either racing or flying is amazing it's yep. it's it's incredible that's just not enough for me to drop the cash i need to get a vr you setup. need to try a vive and you need to play super hot vr it is the best <laughs> vr game i'm telling you i tell everyone this <laughs> i will back him up on that one it's so yeah. good yeah um next up on the list we have this is this is this is going to be a great way to end the summer i'm looking forward to this because this yes you know you know because i probably put you know, between my brother and me, we put thousands of hours into this game. So, and it's and we're finally getting the remaster we've been demanding for years. So, StarCraft Remastered drops August fourteenth worldwide for fifteen bucks, and it looks great. I pre-ordered it immediately. Yeah, same here. Interesting same here. factoid about me: I've played the crap out of StarCraft two, all three chapters, four chapters, I suppose now over and over and over again never actually played all the way through first the original starcraft really yeah and i almost started going through i played about three levels recently on the anthology version and then went "Eh, i'm gonna wait around for the remaster yeah if you if you don't know right now as we as we're talking um you can get the, the the original starcraft anthology so starcraft and brood war um the original version for free from 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 blizzard from battlenet um you're going to have to pay for the remastered version, but the original version will still be will still be available, and that one that version is completely free. But I would hold off on replaying it until the remastered version comes out. And the remastered yeah. version is a prettier version, you know. Um, but the the core gameplay is they're saying is going to be unchanged. So if you're really good at playing the old one, you should be really you know really good at playing the new one. Although. I've listened, read a couple articles about pros who've played the remastered version, and they said that even though technically the gameplay is the same, because some of the visual cues um, are a little different, it takes a minute to acclimate. Um, and some of the things, like the developers even said that they had to leave the shadows that don't operate properly the way they did, and some of the lighting the way, like they could have made the lighting and some of the shadow effects better. But they didn't because by changing them, it affected the core gameplay that people were used to. So they're playing. They're they're playing really, really carefully with how much they change. They don't want to change what was great about the gameplay from the first one because people still play the first one. Like thousands of people are still playing StarCraft One, and they don't want to alienate them. But they still want to make had the visual improvements and the modern support. 
Yeah. And f- 15 bucks for a game that I already know I love is fair. Coleman, do you ever play StarCraft? Uh, nope. <laughs> Not very good at it. Do you know, it, ne- it never really made it big in the UK as far as I've ever been able to gather. Like, Command & Conquer got huge over here because obviously it was a UK-developed thing, but StarCraft never did. I was more of a fighting game kid at that point anyway. Yeah, I remember back in the day, it was like Biggie and Tupac between StarCraft and, <laughs> and Command & Conquer. You know, like, I hated Command & Conquer so much. Like, fuck. Like, I mean, that's not fair. Command & Conquer 1 and 2, the first Red Alert and Generals are all fantastic games. Um, T- Tiberian Sun as well, to a lesser extent. Um, but, you know, Red Alert 2 and 3 were never my thing. And then what happened to the main... The, the abomination that the main t- the main Command & Conquer series <laughs> Command went... Command & Conquer 4, and, Christ. Oh, God. It's one of the worst video games ever made. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But a lot of people now are like, okay, so does that mean you're going to remaster the, the original Warcraft 1 and 2? Which would oh, be awesome. God, that be would great. be awesome. That'd be so awesome. Um, I don't think it's a, it's a, it's likely that you're going to see a remaster of Dia- uh, the the main Dia- the original Diablo games. Oh, we're still waiting for that Diablo 2 remaster, man. I'll tell you. Next up on the list, this is actually cool. If only because I've I recently like as I've said before I've been going through my back catalog and finally finishing off the games that I got that never finished. So I went back and finished uh, Watch Dogs 2, which I actually ended, ended up really liking. Um, once I went through and actually sat down and really enjoyed the whole game because it came out and then a whole bunch of way more high profile games came out and so yeah. I, I put it aside. Watch Dogs 2 is actually really, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And they just dropped a big, huge uh, free content pack for Watch Dogs 2 that adds four player cooperative combat, uh, uh, not cooperative combat, four, hour, four player cooperative mode. So you can explore the entire city. The whole thing's open to you with you and three buddies. You can go and you can fight. You can fight enemies, steal cars, blow up stuff. Um, you can clear the red zones where there's enemies. And then you can seamlessly drop in and out with your three buddies into any of the multiplayer modes. Um, my favorites being uh, bounties and, and uh, the races. But, you know, it's free. You can now explore a big open world like GTA with three buddies and tackle all sorts of stuff. Um, the multiplayer modes have gotten a lot of tweaks and support and they're actually, some of them are actually really, really, really fun. Um, now whether or not this is enough to make you pick up Watch Dogs 2, I don't know, especially if you haven't picked up some of the other big high profile games, but if you own Watch Dogs 2 and any of your buddies do, I mean, I'm going to go back in and install it again, just so I can play around with my buds and help them clear some stuff, um, get the trophies that are attached to some of the multiplayer events. Well, with all these uh, sales going on at the moment, there might be a decent deal on it. Because I remember playing Watch Dogs 2 when it released last year. Um, I think I left it a week just to let the patches come out because the the online stuff was all broken and they had to take it down and then put it back up again. But once I started getting into it, that game was, considering how, how flawed Watch Dogs 1 was, that game is way more fun than it deserves to be. Oh yeah, it's. It, I mean, Watch Dogs One hurt the sales of the, of the second one so much because the first one was such a huge letdown. But I mean, like, I platinum Watch Dogs Two. Wow. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, in the end, I actually really, really, really enjoyed it. I mean, there's a lot of part, there's a lot of parts of it that aren't uh, the best of the best, but it was, it's fun. You know, it's fun. It's uh fifty percent off in the sales at the moment. Woo! Nice. Do it. Nice. And the last thing we're going to talk about is, first off, there's free Rick and Morty DLC for Rocket League, <laughs> which of course, um, which is cool. It's, it's just it's just the cool little cosmetic things you can add to your cars in, in uh, Rocket League. Can you get like a massive Mr. Me6 or whatever it's called sticking out yep. the top. Yeah. That'd be good. Yep. Sits on the top yep. on a Me6 box. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but that's really just a, a, a segue into talking about um, the show. They finally announced when season three of Rick and Morty is coming. So, so t- uh, July, July, 30th, July 30th, this month, um, and they've released an actual trailer, not, 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 a, not, a, not a, a meme, you know, a trolling you trailer. They actually released a full, uh, I think it's like three minute a trailer for season three that's yeah. hilarious like if you I can't if, wait um, if you want to get even more hyped about rick and morty the way to do it you put a soundtrack from dizzy rascal in there that's gonna get you <laughs> yeah yeah i was like i was like oh my god that's such a great choice for the music he, 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 
I mean, he, it fits in so perfectly, right? Bonkers. Speaking, and not only that, I actually, you know, you know those React channels where they make like, like Koreans react to this or like, you know, Scotsmen react to this or whatever, you know, like th- those sort of channels, like they make people from other countries or other places react to some sort of piece of pop culture. There's a great channel where they have a bunch of like Irish people react to Rick and Morty that hadn't seen it before. And it's, <laughs> it's the funniest, it's the funniest thing i've ever seen it's so funny go look it up on youtube irish people react to rick and morty it's great and it ends with this girl going i I haven't seen back to the future and this guy loses his (laughs) shit on her it's so funny it's so funny i know it's not on the news but did you guys hear about the the remaster of call of duty modern warfare getting a uh, standalone release yeah oh that's (laughs) still like 40 bucks it's 40 dollars yeah it's a remaster that has microtransactions and paid DLC that wasn't included in the original remaster, and it's not on the Xbox One. Everything about that is gross. Well, the worst that the worst thing is is you can you can buy the remaster, but then you have to pay twenty dollars to get all the maps. Yeah. So 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 when you add it together, it's a f- they're sell they're selling this years old game. Um, I mean, if you if you actually want the whole game, and 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 that twenty dollars doesn't actually get you all the content that was in the original, just some of it. Yeah. So so basically, you're, you're paying full pr- the full new release price for this game, for like it's it's such a it's such a disgusting money grab. See, I was kind of lucky; I didn't have to pay for that because I won it in a raffle, and I got the special super edition that had the 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 remaster in with the last call of duty and the zombie and everything like all that stuff included and even then you plug it in and it's like hey buy the season pass for this 85 pound game (laughs) yeah it's just i mean i I mean we all love that you know that game and the remaster is is super awesome but i'm not paying 40 dollars for the remaster and then spending another 25 20 dollars to get the dlc pack so i have all the dlc and then on top of that still being hit up for microtransactions like yeah i'll i'll get it when it drops in price gotta get them skins you know yeah it's just no just 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 no <laughs> anyway that's it for episode 129 of the grid railcast hopefully the next time we talk to you we'll be podcasting with dave again he's married he's had his post marriage you know <laughs> fun <laughs> i don't know where i don't know where it was going but i don't want to be crude he's i was boy. expecting it to um, get crude <laughs> anyway but so uh dave will be returning to the podcast fold hopefully we might even be recording a a, a show at the end of this week if we're if, if all works out the way we want it to but uh, thanks again for coleman for stepping up and filling in for dave and helping edit our show in the interim that's all right. Always, always good to have you on the show. And uh, and Coleman right now is going to tell you how you can follow us on Twitter. Ooh. Um, well, as well as Big Red Barrel being Big Red Barrel on Twitter, you can find uh, Pac-Man Polar Bear is Pac-Man Polar Bear. Kev is at Krellif, and I am at Dammit Coleman. Yes, yes. And Kev will tell you about all the other cool places you can find Big Red Barrel content. BigRedBarrel.com is the place you want to be. That's the main, the main mosey, the main, the main thing. YouTube.com <laughs> slash Big Red Barrel TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, what the f*** is a main mosey? I don't know. I thought it was being cool. It turned out I was just making up words. You didn't say, yo, 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 it's your boy. Yo, 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 it's your boy. <laughs> At twitch.tv slash uh, Big Red Barrel. Not a uh, Big Red Barrel. If, if, if you don't know, I'm a YouTube creator. <laughs> Smash yo, that yo, like yo, button. Yo, your boy representing the Big Red Barrel. Oh, man, I feel so bad for Jesse Wellens, even though I hate his content. But that E3 presser where he just, you know, his teleprompter failed on him, like oh, that God. was just painful. I prefer oh, to man. believe that hey, he guys, just doesn't understand how teleprompters work. Need for speed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, <laughs> everyone, everyone's eighth ranked racing game, yeah. um, <laughs> right? Right? Like, there's so many better games. No, than but guys, we're games making it more games. like the Fast and the Furious. This we're making time. it more like the Run. Cool. You like the <laughs> yeah. Run, right? Everyone liked the Run. Yeah. Oh, and there's the there's the Crew too, because the Crew One was so good. Everyone's tenth um, best racing game. <laughs> oh, it's just just so terrible. <laughs> anyway, and we got some we got some shout outs. Uh, because we've been racing shows again. Got a shout out to Stealthy Joe. Shout out to War Machine. Shout out to Richard Kirk. Double shout outs to Stingo for reminding me to update the the official Big Red Barrel curated list 
uh, of Steam games uh, on Steam. So if you if you want to follow a curator, Big Red Barrel has a curated list of the best um, indie and middleware games that you can that you might have missed out on on Steam. We don't we don't cover the AAA games because you've probably you've probably already seen lots of press. You probably already know about all the big AAA games. But we we keep a, an updated list of uh, indie games and middleware games. So games forty dollars and under on Steam that you might want to check out with a little uh, a little write up on why they're cool and what kind of genres they are. There's one in particular we really need to act to bung on there. Okay, because I was going to suggest one too. Dead Cells. Dead Cells. That's what I was Dead say. Cells needs to be on that list. <laughs> Dead Cells yeah. is amazing. Um, yeah. So uh, basically, every every May, I I update the list with all of the latest and greatest. Uh, not the latest and greatest, but all all the big indie and middle middleware games from the past year. However, um, I am a couple weeks behind on that, obviously. So thanks to Stingo for reminding me. The Big Red Barrel Steam curated list will be updated by the end of this week. So by Friday, July seventh the BRB Steam curated list will be updated with all the, 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 the last year's best indie and middleware games that you guys can check out and, and what games we think are cool. And I think that's it for this episode, Big Red Barrel 129. We will catch you guys on the flip side. Ladies. Good souls. Big Red are quite welcome for the podcasting goodness that you just heard why not roll on over to bigredbarrel.com for more podcasts news reviews and videos from the biggest reddest site on the internet bigredbarrel.com